Hi everyone and welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 52. We've made it to a whole year's worth of podcasts. Yay. Ian's here, as you can hear. He's celebrating with That's me. That's me. And I'm also here, obviously. Did you think we'd make it this far? No. Seriously not? I don't know. There have been multiple times where we've come close to not having something to talk about. There's always something to talk about with Leggy. Yeah. Yeah, we try and mix it up. Sometimes there's news, sometimes there's not news and we just make it work. But we're having fun. Yep. It's like we started the podcast because we wanted to capture some of the conversations that we have around Lego. Yeah. I guess. We were already, always talking about Lego, pretty much. That's true. So we may as well just share it with everyone else and let people know what we think. Yep. So, to celebrate, we have elicited, is that the right word? Questions yeah. from people um, via several methods. Instagram, community tab, randomly asking people on the street. Yep. No, not on the street. Um in live streams and things. So let's start with some questions from T-E-M-H, someone who subscribes to our podcast and really enjoys it. That's good. So they wanted to know how we first got into it. I'm going to guess it has been the whole Lego hobby. Yeah. So um, I had Lego as a kid. I don't know which sets I had when. I know that I had one of the early castles, not the yellow one. It was a grey one, but you could fold it out. And Yeah, you're not that old. Yeah. I remember having a lot of oh, road yeah. base plates. Oh, road base plates, okay. And like just building like streets in the living room, just having them on the floor, and they'd last for you know a few weeks until someone got fed up of me yeah. having Lego everywhere, and they got tidied away. Yeah. I remember getting my my parents loved telling the story that they got me a Lego train. And it was one where you could either have it as a like high speed passenger train or a steam engine, so it had the tall two builds. And so they built it because I would have been too young to actually build it, probably. So they built the either that or they didn't like you. Yeah, that could be that. They built the high speed train version, so I got it for Christmas. So I came down, mm. and the first thing I said to them after seeing it built is, "I wanted the other one." So I they mean, then had to rebuild. I it. think your parents just don't seem to understand why. Why would you want the high speed yeah. passenger train? You're always going to want the steam train. Yeah, special parents. So then I just grew out of Lego. I don't remember when I stopped playing with Lego. I did just yeah. yeah. And your mum at some things. point got rid of all your Lego. Yeah, which is just mean. Mm. So then at university i used lego for my master's dissertation doing um, robotics so using i was using the gen 1 mindstorms but i think gen 2 mindstorms had just come out yeah because i remember so i think i bought the gen 2 as well okay because you got your parents to buy you the first one i think well as a present or something. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but I didn't really get back into Lego until we got back into Lego. So yeah, growing up I didn't really have much Lego. We had some that my mum tells me came from like the local dentist's office or someone that they were clearing out their, their Lego. So it was just a mishmash of stuff. I do have all that Lego. My mum has since given it to me. I'll do a brick haul at some point to, to show you what it is because there's lots in there and I'd quite like to go through some of it, but... Just finding the time to do that would be good. So yeah, I don't remember really having sets. We had one set each, I think, me and my sister. She had the stables. I had a uh, a petrol station. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's random. pretty random, yeah. And then I don't think I ever really thought about Lego until you suggested, like, the first Christmas of being in our new house. I said, we need a tradition. You said, how about we buy a big Lego set for each other? And that was, we decided it would be a New Year tradition, so we didn't yeah. have to waste a Christmas present on it. It'd be like an extra present, because we're cheeky like that. Yeah. And that's where it started. That was 2009, and now we're at 2022. Yeah. That's a long time. Mm. That's a lot of Lego. And I think it did start off as just the two sets a year. Yeah. I'd occasionally buy, like, CMFs and, like, the small... Do you remember the Mixels? They were, yes. like, bigger than CMFs. Just little builds. Yeah. And then I started getting into the three-in-ones, and, and then I was just like, I want all the Lego. Yeah. But I think it was... Was it during the pandemic where we started watching other people's Lego channels? I don't even know yeah. really why. I was a bit fed up with my job and building lots of Lego. And then we were watching those at the same time. Yeah. And so when I was losing my job, we sort of went, oh, well, now's not the good a good time to be looking for a new job. Mm. As a, a, I think it was before the pandemic. 
that we were watching Lego channels. Because I think you weren't particularly happy at work. And then the news came out that there were going to be redundancies in your department. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, you were trying to work out what... We tried to work out whether we could cope without you having a job. Well, yeah, because finding a job that's part-time, it didn't seem worth... I couldn't find the same sort of salary. Yeah. And so you'd just be essentially paying for childcare. So... It's like, well, we'll just make do with one income and have a little bit of fun on the side. We wanted to yeah. we wanted to get into our Lego city, didn't we? We're like, let's just build a Lego city. So it seemed like a good good yeah. idea to see if we could. Then obviously the pandemic hit. Yeah. Boom. You weren't made redundant because the they pandemic that delayed everything, yeah. And so yeah, we then had, you know, trying to do Lego, cope with homeschooling and both of us in kind of full time work. Yeah. I mean I didn't start my Lego channel until about was it September? I think yeah, end of August, September, and I was made redundant in October. So mm. there wasn't much time where I was doing both. And yeah. at that point, I already knew I was being made redundant. So it's not like I was working very hard, yeah, or at all. Um, I mean seriously, yeah, <laughs> why would you? So that's yeah, that's how we ended up on on the YouTube, mm. just because I wanted something to bridge the gap in my CV that. If I was out of work for a period of time, I could still show that I delivered on something. Yeah. Like, I had deadlines, obviously self-set and things, but something that I was doing every week, like a weekly yeah. video, I'm producing something. So I, I thought it would make it look better if I then wanted to get back into the, the world of work. Which I don't want to. Why would you want to? <laughs> um. So yeah, that's how we kind of got into it. Um. They also asked what are standout sets for us. I'm going to let you go first because I haven't really thought about what my standout sets are. So, I was thinking about this. There's lots of sets that I like. You know, there's... um, I've recently been rejigging the Coral Reef and you've got the Silent Mary. Yeah. That's a really nice set. It's a boat, but it's not like any of the other boats. No, it's very unique. It's a ghost ship and so... And it's got some awesome sharks. It does. Some um, zombie sharks, I'd call them. Yeah. But I think maybe, for me, I'm trying to think... Uh, you've got the Ice Castles, another really nice build. The, the one thing I really love about that, actually, is the ability to move it around our city. It's very sturdy. It's, yeah. 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 If so you we... compare it to the Disney Castle, which I have dropped twice now, or parts of it have fallen off when I've tried to move yeah. it slightly... Is, is Was it the Ice Castle that I did quite a lot of swooshing with? Yeah. Yeah, it is a very sturdy build. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was another set that I did quite a lot of swooshing with, but I can't remember what that was. Mm. Maybe it was the Ice Castle. I think, for me, the one that stands out most... Uh, well, there's two and they're very similar, but Ewok Village and the Treehouse. Okay. I think those two. Those are your standout sets. Yeah. Because you like trees. It's You've got the organic in yeah. there. I, I, I do find it fascinating how you can take something that is essentially a square brick and make something that looks realistically alive kind mm. of thing um, from it. I think it's very impressive. I think standout sets for me, I think the very first modular that we got, like that got me back into, or not back into, but that I fell in love with mm. building buildings at that point. And yeah. so it's iconic for us. And then I'm still super excited about building the fishing store, which we're going to do when we hit 1k. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I can't wait. I'm worried that it will be an anti-climax, like having put it off for so long <laughs> that I won't enjoy it as much, but I'm not letting you help me with that one. But... Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I find it hard to say this is my favourite set or this is the best set because I'm a very much in the moment builder kind of mm. person. I, I enjoy the build process. So once I've built the set, I, could th- I think the quickie mark... I remember being quite a fun set to play with when we built that one because there was so much detail in that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just all about the build. If I'm building it, I'm happy. Um, and the last question from T E M H, which is not easy to keep saying. Um, where do we see our collection heading in the long term? I don't know. I'm a little bit worried that I don't really want to stop buying new Lego sets because mm. I, I think they get better all the time. Yeah. Mostly. And. Yeah, we have a finite amount of space, and I also really love all the sets we currently have. So I think, like with the new roller coaster, we've got to make a choice: do we sacrifice some of the space we we're going to put other stuff in to put two roller coasters in? Do we swap one in and one out? Mm. And that's going to be a, a dilemma that we're constantly going to be facing in the future. Yeah, we know we're always going to be gravitating towards the city sets because that's what we want to do. Yeah, but how do we keep? Yeah. 
Well, no, fresh, I'm quite excited know. by the castle mm. that I'm building, where I'm trying to take lots of different castle sets and produce one large castle from them. Because although it's a large castle, it is not as big as having all of those sets individually. Yeah. But it's trying to get the main, you know, the, well, the iconic part of yeah. that set in. You can look at it and go, oh, that looks like, oh, it is kind yeah. of like, um, you don't want to just steal like oh look I've put five bricks from each building like that. yeah. that's not, it's not you're not reusing the parts you're reusing the designs yeah um, so like with the tower on the three and one the bit the little dragon heads mm. that didn't really work where they were you've made sure to move them so that they are still included in the building yeah. because they're quite a key part of yeah. that, that build yeah. and then there's things like hiding sets in there as well so in the coral reef We've got uh, yeah, part of the, the bouquet. Yeah, all of the bouquets uh, in there. A lot of the succulents are going to go in there. So it's, you know, trying to fit them in around stuff. The bonsai tree, yeah. which hopefully we're going to have two, so we can have both the blossom one and the green, and one. The green one. And they're going in the park, aren't so, they? So, well, the green one's going in the park, and then I was thinking the blossom one's more likely to go in the kind of Asian quarter. Oh uh, yeah, that would probably work better because there's already they're already pinkish kind of yeah. things in there, or are they red? Mm. Maybe they're right. yeah. Mm. Well, but cherry blossom works with yeah. that aesthetic, yeah. really, doesn't it? But then using the stand that the bonsai tree comes on, yeah. that's being used as a little bridge over a yeah, stream. Yeah, sweet so little bridge. It's trying to sneak sets in. So you're saying that we would possibly keep buying things and just take elements from new things yeah. to augment what we already have I and make so. it better. Mm, okay yeah i just think it's gonna get crowded and at some point we will have to make choices but that's a tomorrow me problem or yeah. a tomorrow you problem okay right on to tech or planet tech or tech productions he asked uh, what's your favorite planet tech moment so i'll let you decide um i think i will get although it wasn't on camera him dropping the hoth set that he's building you enjoyed that didn't yeah you? yeah i enjoyed that why did you enjoy that's mean <laughs> it is you're a you're a mean kind of I guy i am a mean guy that's that's where it comes from i don't know i mean there's a lot of star wars talk yeah uh, i think i quite enjoyed the the time where he didn't realize his um cabinets were reflective and, well, and when took he did his top off. Show, yeah, yeah. yeah um just because i thought it was funny but I, I generally enjoy Planet Tech's streams. I would recommend them to anyone because yeah. they have stolen all of the fun stuff from our streams and it built upon them. I really enjoy the betting element. I think I think it's fun. Yes. So we, we have no idea what they're talking about most of the time. Yeah. Um, like the chat is always Star Wars focused, and when yet we're there, like we'll just pretend it's Star Trek and, and annoy as many people as possible. Yes. It's it's just it's a it's a good laugh. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, on to a serious question. Um, do you find that yours and Ian's opinion on Lego related topics more often align or conflict? I would say they tend to align. Yeah, I I mean we're we're married. We've been married for ten years, and we do agree on a lot of things. Like our yeah. values are the same. So we're going to have the same perspective normally. We're also yeah. like in the same kind of life together. We're both parents of yeah. the same children. Yeah. Like, so, so I mean, I think on the kind of... It depends, we won't necessarily agree on a set. You yeah. Know, there'll be some sets and one of us will want it and the other one won't. Or yeah, whatever. or you think brick-built animals are good. I think yeah. rolled animals are good. We have differences of opinion mm. there. But, you know, when it comes to things like um, how Lego completely missed the point with video yeah um, how, how they need to represent diversity a lot better and yeah like their sustainability we all, all of always kind of agree on those agree. things yeah i mean even when it comes to themes i mean as i said not into star wars yeah you know, so if one of us was heavily into a theme and the other one wasn't then it might be a problem but you kind of got that bit with harry potter yeah you like it and i don't really care for of it yeah i just like the buildings if i'm mm. honest i i like harry potter i've read the books and yet the reason i buy so many harry potter sets is because they all connect together to make another little world and that's the thing that i like that's why i wanted to make a city in the first place so it's like a secondary world to that one yeah and, and i just the, i was hooked in by the the 2018 round where all the builds interconnected to make a bigger like bigger building and that's yeah. that's my jam mm. i like that so that's it's not that I love Harry Potter, it's just that I love I love buildings. Yeah. Quite sad really, isn't it? But yeah, I think we normally agree. I think sometimes we'll disagree 
just for fun for the podcast. Yeah. Like I'll play devil's advocate. You'll play. You'll I'll definitely just, play you up. devil's advocate. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is more fun? Was the the extension of the question? Is it more fun to agree or to to disagree? I think it depends. Yeah. I think generally agreeing at a kind of broad level and then arguing about the details is it's fun. what's the most fun. Yeah. If we had fundamentally different views on what Lego should be doing with inclusion. Yeah. Then well, I think Then we wouldn't be together. I don't yeah. think. I think that would be a bigger yes. issue. Okay. On sustainability. Yeah, screw those trees. <laughs> um <laughs> like yeah. yeah. I mean, you you don't care for recycling as much as I care for recycling, but that's because you just don't think there's enough impact from you as a person. Um, or, or you just yeah, know, I, I just think I think there's a general thing that the the industry tries to blame consumers rather than. Do you think to there's fix bigger issues. issues, and if you f- fix those ones, then it's irrelevant whether you specifically are getting a polystyrene thing for lunch or something. So yeah, saying? yeah. Thank you. Mm. Um, okay, right. Sai asked, did you do it? Um, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by it, Sai, but yes, we did. Um, <laughs> right, the minifig who. Um, he asked, what's your favourite minifig? I don't really care for minifigs. Yeah, Ian's not a fan of minifigs. We both have done our own CMF um, favourite episodes yeah. of Minifigure Monday. Mine was the balloon seller. Yeah. Um, just because I really like the little balloon mm. things. And... He's purple as well. He's partially purple, I feel. Or is he orange? Wow, he's, he's obviously my favourite. I can't yeah. remember. And yours was the blues brothery kind of yeah. saxophone guy. Saxophonist. 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 No. <laughs> Saxophonist. Yep, that's the one. Um, but is that? But that's CMS specific. Is there mm. like a better minifig ever? I don't really pay attention to minifigs no, and sets. No, you don't. So. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think I'll stick with my balloon guy. Um, which part of your city are you most proud of? I think oh, probably the coral reef. Yeah, because you just built that out of your brain. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah. And um, what am I most proud of? Hmm. I don't know because I I very much am still a uh, I'm just building sets. I don't feel like I've put my personal stamp on most of it. I've got ideas mm. and I just never really get up there to do them right. or I don't really know where to start so in my head I've got all these ideas right. but they just don't come out anyway yeah. um, it just seems a bit hard but <laughs> I'll get there Yeah, um, I'm sure I have the ability once I devote a bit more time to it but um, I'm proud of your, your coral reef and that mountain, that mountain is pretty cool mm. um, I think the winter village does look really good Yeah. Um, and which part are you excited to finish now I wasn't sure whether that means because you're fed up of doing it. <laughs> like, I'm really excited to finish this area of our city because it's so annoying. Mm. Um, or whether it's because it would look good finished. And if it's it would look good finished, then I, I'd quite like to finish the fairground and the Chinatown, mm. I think, because those are the areas that I've got ideas mm. for. And so I'd be excited to get them done. I'm just not there For me... I mean, I don't... Is anything ever really finished? No, exactly. I don't really want to stop. So, so like the Coral Reef, as I said, I'm redoing it, and as part of that, I will be including the a lot of the succulent builds into it. Yeah. You know, at some point, I'm thinking I will probably add in some kind of monster tentacle things trying to Ooh. wrap around the Silent Mary and stuff like that. So I've got little Ooh, ideas of how cool. to add to it. Yeah. So I don't know if it's ever going to be finished Each time it's in like that an sense. extra little project and, mm. yeah. But I think the one that I'm excited about is seeing the progress on most is the castle yeah okay fair enough and um, what advice do you have for making content do you have, have a wife who does it all for have you have a wife who does it all for you yeah. um so yeah i think i would say that i'm the content creator and you're the the live stream like back-end technology guru mm. um and you just like the personality on the live streams and things and, and podcasts co-host obviously yeah but i'm the one who's like deciding what videos we do when and getting them made and all of that all stuff. The yeah. Um so I'm the content creator and it is it I would say decide what you want from your channel. Decide whether you want it to grow or whether you just want to have fun and document your journey. Like they're two very different things. If you're yes. trying to make a a large YouTube channel then you're gonna be needing to do things to make your analytics look good. If you're just trying to document stuff, then document stuff, the things you enjoy. Yeah. If you're not enjoying it then your videos will show that you're not enjoying it 
But it's like you do the minifigure Mondays. Yeah, my minifigure Mondays just like they don't bring me anything. I think they probably hurt my channel. But I I need them to justify my collection. <laughs> yes. And I I think it's quite fun to um to tell people like what you think of a minifigure, especially yeah. when you tell me things about what you think of the minifigures. You make me giggle. And I, I people like them. But I don't think they bring people to my channel kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, I think when you're doing content, you need to be enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. But I think the point is that not everything that you enjoy should necessarily be made public. <laughs> it's that going, yes, I've enjoyed this, but that doesn't work for the channel yeah. kind of thing. I'm, I don't think you should ever go out and do something that you don't enjoy just because you think it's going to get yeah. views. Because okay. even if it does get you views, you're going to be you're going to start resenting having to make that mm. kind of content like we've made tactical decisions in the past about buying sets day one because we know that other people won't necessarily have them so like with the Elsa's Ice Castle mm. we knew that no one from LAN had already reviewed it so we went out yeah. we got it we got it onto our channel as quickly as possible but we wanted to build that set for sure yeah. so we didn't go out purely for views and we I just think we did also it in a smart way to ex- Experience the whole process of getting a set and trying to get out there and have the yeah. first review out on YouTube. Yeah, I was very tired after that, but it was yeah. it was interesting and it was so exciting to watch that. So yeah. you've got to do some things that give you that, um, I guess, like feedback that, mm. and the excitement. But I would also say balance is important. So if you have a full time job as well, don't try and do daily content. That's just crazy. I think consistency is the the better option i mean not everyone can need to do consistency again yeah. if you're not trying to like appease the algorithm yeah. gods then it doesn't really matter but I think it's nicer to grow a community yeah. that way if you're consistent yes if you're trying to especially if you're trying to grow a community through live streams i think consistency yeah is important people knowing when they can find you yeah that's really helpful so if you don't have a regular time slot people won't know to come back yeah so yeah i think those are kind of my top tips mm. and what has been the set that most impressed you in person and which one was a letdown hmm. i think we were both a little bit disappointed with Ninjago city gardens yes and i don't remember i i, I think because we built all three relatively close we started with do we start with docks then city gardens oh no i think we did docks City Gardens, then City, I think. I can't remember what order And we because we were doing them all at the same time, hmm. I think it didn't stand up to the previous two. Yeah. There wasn't... There, I, I, I don't know if it was a side effect of how we built it as well, because we were very much building little bits and not stacking it straight away, and then stacking it seemed painful. Hmm. I mean, I look at it now, and it still it looks good, but I remember it not being as enjoyable yeah. as the other two. Yeah, so I think so, that's out of the three... It was the one we enjoyed the least. And I think... And because we were building them all together, you had that direct comparison. Yeah. But everyone else was so hyped for it because it was an, a great big set that mm. if you hadn't got the other two, that it was yeah. the best you could get. So it was it was tricky. Um, what most impressed you in person? I, I The large Ecto-1. You, you enjoyed that, did you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It does look quite impressive. It's quite cool. It's got the play features in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's... When you showed me all the like the way things open and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it is a lot more exciting than you, you think it would be. Yeah. I really like um when I go into the Lego store and see the sets in person, the all of the like friends sets. That, that in our Lego store, that's kind of how I go in and go via the Duplo and to the friends. And you'll see a set and you won't realize how bright and beautiful it looks or how the size mm. of it so going into the lego store i can't remember the specific one but i remember there was one like i have to get that now i didn't realize it was that good and in fact like you know that annoying one that's been on offer the one that i bought for leah the stables um yeah. the disney princess stables. the disney princess stables that has got bell and rapunzel and i was like this is just annoying like why have they put these two together and, and mm. Why does nobody want to buy this? Because it was so cheap. But actually, it was a really fun build. It's really not a stable build, which is funny because it's stables. Yeah. Um, so every time you try and pick it up, it falls apart. But it looks really nice. Mm. And she really enjoys playing with that. So that one's impressed me more than I was expecting. And it was a cheap price. So, you know, can't complain. Um, Mikey J Productions asked, who is the bigger Lego fan? Me or you? So I think this one's complicated. Oh. 
So you get much more excited about the sets. Yeah. But you don't really do any mocking. You don't. I, I mock you sometimes. You do mock me occasionally. <laughs> as much as possible. Um, you know, you don't often build the. You don't really do any technic. Oh, technic noise. Whereas I like... enjoy yeah. the sets that have bits of technic in them. So I think Lego so... is. You're a bigger Lego fan. I'm mm. a bigger fan of building Lego. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. I when it comes to Lego as a company, I'd say I'm a lot more critical of them oh, than yeah. you are. Well, because like, I'm just not a very critical person. Mm. I'm, I'm generally quite a happy, just give me some Lego, I'm happy yeah. kind of person. But I, I think I enjoy hearing your opinion on Lego. And I try to not hate them, which is easy to do based on some of the things we mm. like hear from them. Because I, I still want to buy their Lego. Yeah. And I like Lego. But yeah, I'm, I'm still very much a set builder and... A new set will come out, I have to have it. Whereas yeah. you never seem to have that. So, I don't know. I think there's the... We're both really big Lego fans. So yeah. That's what it is. Um, um, so, I did go back to the last time we did a, a podcast episode with questions. And I sort of said, if you've got more questions, put them in the comments. We'll answer them next time. That was episode 11. Was so, it? it's been a while. Wow. Um, and Axel Plate had t- some questions. So... His main one was, do these minifigs look like you? I'm going to hope that he now knows, because yeah. we, at that point, episode 11, I think we were live streaming with just hands, and now you get to see our beautiful faces. Yeah. So he wanted to know if he had a beard, yeah. and whether my hair was that long, mm. um, and I'm hoping he now knows. Yeah. So, yes, I think they do. Our sig fig for Hayley, I think, could do with some updating, because yeah. she's grown a lot since we started the channel. But then it's it's now part of our branding so it's kind of hard to work out what to do with that at some point we might do some updated branding and yeah. then we can fix her um yeah she doesn't like playing with her own minifig whereas Lee is quite happy to play with hers because mm. she kind of feels like it looks like yeah it. um and axel also asked have you visited any other countries a few yeah quite a few countries and um the funny thing is when he asked that question we were in spain so nice. i could immediately answer yes Yes, we're yeah. in Spain right now. We've got a map on our wall of all the places that we've kind of been together. Yeah. But you've been to a few more places, like, growing up. My family always just went to the Isle of Wight. My very first plane flight was all the way to Japan at the age of, sort of, 16. On my own, without my like, without my family. Yeah. So, yeah, I haven't travelled as much. But when I did travel, I went as far as I could, yes. pretty much. Yeah, we've been around Europe. We did, we've done two European cruises together. Yep, we did one down the med and we did the other one up to sort of St. St. Petersburg. Petersburg so it covered quite a lot of yeah I'd like to do another cruise coast. at some point um, take the girls yeah. on a cruise I think it'll be fun it's just expensive um, plus with small kids it's a bit well they're, I think they're older now that yeah, it wouldn't be well, so bad we were waiting still yeah a little bit older needed yeah well I'm still I'm still game yeah. um, and we also went to Vancouver just um, after Hayley was born, yeah, which was a long way to go with a newborn, but actually really easy. Newborns are really easy to fly with. I would say yeah. that toddlers are harder. So, but yeah, I, you're not overly bothered about seeing the world. I would love to see the world mm. a bit more, but yeah, you just like mm, it's just a, a, a place. Yeah, I like going places with like to get the food. I like food, and you quite like the food. Yeah, unless there's onion in it or something. And then the last question was from London Bridge Books. He asked if we would be getting the new roller coaster that's just come been announced today as we record to put in our city. And the answer is... We're not sure. We're not sure. Um, I think so. I think we probably will. The question is, are we going to swap it out for the one that we already have? I'm wondering, once we get it and build it, see if we can combine them. Oh, madness. I just don't see how we have the space for them both. Mm. I'm also not overly keen on the colouring of it. Um, or the way the the word loop looks. I feel like it actually looks like it says LBP, which is yeah. weird. I kind of see what they've done. They're trying to make it look like the actual loops on the roller coaster. But, but it doesn't. It, it looks like a B. Yeah, it's just annoying. So. Um, but it's a fun idea. And I think if it's easily motorisable, that would be better. Yeah. Because you're worried that there's like a two-part process to sort of you have to make it get to the bit that takes it up and then let it get go. So I think from what I can see on the pictures, it looks like there's something that stops the cars from going onto the elevator. Right. So, you know, the elevator goes down, then something, it looks like there's like a little tooth that stops it. So that moves, the car goes on, then it goes up, and then it will automatically come off at the top. Right. 
Oh yeah, because it's kind of tilted down yeah. to, to create a gradient. But, so therefore, the question is, how does that all work? Yeah. Do you have to tell it to go up and tell it to go down, and do you have to actually press something to load it, or is that yeah. built in as well? It's it's complicated. Yeah. But that's the thing that you enjoy. Yeah. We've decided so, and I enjoy seeing you do it. Okay. So it's always fun. Um, but I think yeah, we're definitely going to get it on a roll day. So when we get. It, a bit of a discount on it because it's yeah. expensive. It's a very big roller coaster, very expensive roller coaster. Um, anything else you wanted to tell people as part of our birthday episode? There was quite a decent number of questions actually. I, I thought, oh, that's not many, but yeah, when you start talking, it's filled an episode. Yeah, it's more than filled an episode. It's a slightly longer one than normal. Apologies, people. But, you know, it's our birthday. Or it's the podcast's birthday. Yep. Happy birthday to podcast. <laughs> yep, that's something we can cut out. No, I'm not cutting that. <laughs> That's the fun part. Right. So if you want to listen to any of the other 51 episodes of the podcast, you can. There's a playlist. I'll link that in the description or in the show notes, depending on where you're listening to this. Uh, Does anyone listen to it somewhere other than YouTube? Yeah. Do people, like, comment on it or no. anything else? If, no. you're, if you're listening somewhere other than YouTube, please leave us a comment on whatever platform that is. And if you have left us a comment and we've never replied to it, maybe we don't understand how those comments work and just catch us on Instagram and tell us and then we'll maybe work it out. But, yeah, we'll be back next week because you can't end a, a podcast after... 52 weeks and just go oh that's it no we've done a year that'll do we'll be here forever or not but you know we're having fun still yeah right have a good week everybody and we'll catch you next time bye bye